This is the relative impact of the carbon footprint for the wine trade. melt some misconceptions about, well, a, a couple really, because we, we want to uh, get to the questions. Uh, first of all, is, uh, one of the biggest uh, topics is, well, hang on, well, what about organic, right? What about uh, biodynamic, natural? Isn't that sustainable? Shouldn't I worry about that first? Shouldn't I make that be the sticker on my bottle instead of certifications that, that are sustainability or, or otherwise? Perhaps, perhaps not. Most sustainability champions in wine and spirits do support, want to have reduced pesticides that are synthetic or even altogether. They do want to eat organic. I feed my kids organic food all the time. I prefer that over the non-organic stuff. I get it. I'm with you. But that's only part of the bigger picture. For the climate, what matters most has, well, I'll flip it the other way, organic and biodynamic and natural. I'm going to actually show you the pop, just blow the slide up, because this is one of the most important slides that I recently discovered uh, about a year ago, and I shared this on a, on a, a session with Porter Protocol. This is the relative impact of the carbon footprint for the wine trade. Um, it's not very recent, but I've done calculations. It's not that different these days. You've got a lot of stuff here that has nothing to do with farming, and if you look at the organic biodynamic and so forth, those are farming principles. That's really only covering the, black, the, the brown or green portion of this entire life cycle. You got 20, you got 70%. That has nothing to do uh, with that. There's no organic bottle. There is no organic water sanitation, right? There's no organic energy use, right? So this blows up much more than just the idea of pesticide reduction and synthetics removal from your vineyard. So that's one misconception is that it's not that it's, it's not that one is better than the other. One is more narrow, focused on one issue, organic. Sustainability is essentially a frame of mind and a business, environmental, and, and cultural philosophy rooted in those, those concepts I told you about. Let's remove, let's go back to that. And those six concepts, those six principles. Uh, greenwashing is now on there. Does anybody, uh, everyone knows what greenwashing is, right? Yes? Should I, should I define it real quick? Maybe, yeah. Greenwashing is taking a couple things that, or one thing you might do, install solar panels, and then say that you are now sustainable. Right? So you are using the green, one, one or two different things to then paint yourself as a sustainability or climate action warrior champion. Um, there is and has been historically a good reason why there's some skepticism about the loose standards, you might say, or overusing the word sustainability or, or misapplying it, right? Guess what? The people who are in charge, who have been in charge of those heads of organizations were, which were solving yesterday's problems are now solved. They've listened, they've participated, and they've heard. On average, the conversation's not stuck in the past. The word sustainability, most of the people who are the sustainability warriors kind of don't like the word because it's been diluted, but they're, we're stuck with it, and they're taking it back. There are warriors legitimately in wine and spirits who are leading organizations who are putting, sinking their, sinking teeth, having, who, the metaphor is, who are growing the teeth of that certification that actually means more and more. So that word is being used more intelligently now. So in many places, and it's expanding, right? Uh, 